Confident you can kick 165 points every week? <laughs> Over seven quarters, yeah. That uh, gives you a bit more chance of doing that, doesn't it? But um, no, we, look, a, a really good chance to have a good hit out today across seven quarters or seven periods, whatever you want to call it, obviously. But um, yeah, it's just a great chance for uh, both clubs to work on systems and play against a different opposition. From an AFL perspective, do you sort of you isolate that first four quarters and, and really look at it as a big tick against a good team? Yeah, look, it was um, definitely a slow start from us. The boys were really amped up and excited to be playing footy against some, some real opposition again today. So I thought we were pretty shaky early and we definitely let them jump us. Our, our contest work and our pressure was was a fair way off. Um, but to the boys' credit, they were able to turn that round back into the first quarter and, and sort of after quarter time to, to play more of the footy that we wanted to play. And it was pleasing, uh, a lot of pleasing signs in there from individuals and also our system. So... We come away pretty uh, pretty happy with today and how we looked. Were there any adjustments that you did to, that led to that turnaround in that first quarter? Yeah, there were. We made some some adjustments around the footy um, with the way that we structured up. And um, to be honest, a bit of it was was mindset, our ability to, to create some pressure on the opposition, to be a bit cleaner in and around the contest, um, and, and and stick some tackles. Really, was what the hallmark of our game has been built around the last couple of years, and this year is going to be no different. So when we were able to impart that bit of pressure on Frio, um, you know, took a bit away from them, but allowed us to play the game on our terms more often than not. How did you feel about seven quarters? Did you na- feel like a test match? Did yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah, no, it's pretty. We didn't coach the last three quarters. That was uh, over to our development boys um, and, and Godsey. But uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a long day. But what it does mean is that you know both squads get to play, and I'd love to see down the track that we have you know a, a game before ours or after a curtain raiser. Or, Whatever it is that we see both squads playing, it just makes um, it feel like a one big footy club. Did you get your numbers out? Did you, like we were talking before, Phil felt, felt like you played nearly every minute. You know, Crouchy played a bit into the yep. second half of the seven quarters. Yeah, so guys were spread across, yeah, some over more than the four quarters. And, and uh, yeah, everyone, the plan was to get their minutes. Um, and, you know, Berger had the option of a few guys, if you wanted to top up and feel like you needed a bit more, then by all means, keep going. Um, so yeah, look, they each have their own parameters that we want them to hit, um, and Darren and his team are well managed in that regard. So um, it was a great chance for everyone to get their prescribed minutes. What was the big tick? Biggest tick would have been uh, particularly response after quarter time because I think it was minus 11 clearance in that first quarter. We only had basic stats today, but just a, it felt like that as well that we just couldn't get our hands on it, weren't cleaning around the contest, and probably more so in that second half we saw more of the footy we wanted to play with time in our forward half, uh, got some result from centre bounce which allowed us to play that sort of game and off the back of our pressure and, and contest work, um, looked more of the sort of game that we wanted to play and um, we've done a lot of work with you know, team defence and offence, we saw some good signs in that space but if you look at the, probably the second half in, in isolation it's like that's, that's sort of the brand we want to be playing. What did you make of um, Rob's game? You talk about that standing theory stuff early on. Yeah, look, I thought it was um, a good response all round. Um, it's sometimes hard when you look at raw numbers from clearance or from hit outs, etc. It's not always on the ruckman itself, uh, or himself, sorry. It's um, also to do with setups at ground level, and we, we failed him at ground level a number of times with the way that we set ourselves up three on three at ground level. So uh, we'll have a good look at that, uh, good chance to learn. We did try a few different things in there today. Um, and we've got some different personnel running through there. So building that chemistry, you would have seen Rankin, Rochelle, Saligo um, spend a bit more time through there than what they had done previously. So that's a good sign for us that we're building. But um, yeah, iron out a few things over the coming weeks and hopefully heading to round one where we're in better shape. You took a bit of a glimpse into the future. Sloan spent most of the time on a wing and Keyes was forward. Is it is it going to be quite a... Like, yeah, a well, we've, we've spoken, uh, I guess, publicly a fair bit around it um, and also plans moving forward to give a different look around the footy. Um, so you mentioned likes of Sloaney playing a bit more on the wing. That's a bit of managing his body at the moment, but also he understands the look we're trying to get in around the footy. And we know Isaac and Josh give us a different dynamic around the ball. Jake saligo has been pretty classy, whether he plays on ball, or wing, forward. So we love what he brings. Um, so it's, it's been pleasing to see those guys develop. Sam Berry and, and Harry Schomberg, I thought, showed some really good signs that they continue to develop their game. So uh, we've just got to keep trying to, to build that chemistry and um, cohesion in that midfield group, and hopefully it holds us in good stead for this year and, and years to come. Yeah, Barry's a bit like Fogarty. He seems like 
they haven't they've picked up exactly where, from where they left yeah. off last season. Yeah, look, he um, he's a real barometer for us around the around the contest. So I mentioned earlier when we're off on our game with our contest work, pressure, tackling. Um, Sam's one of those guys that really gets us going in that regard. So a couple of really good efforts out there today, where there were smothers, tackles, pressure, work. So um, yeah, he's he's definitely growing his game, which is a really pleasing sign for us. Happy with Sloane? Sorry. Yeah, Sloane. I'm really happy nice for, for Roy. Yeah, he um, played his role uh, really well on that wing and. Um, just been really sharp the last couple of weeks, which he's been itching to get out and play some footy and look sharp out there today, you know, in and under the footy and also his, his running patterns and the way he executed was, I guess, what we expect of Sloaney, but it's just good to see him so confident in his, his body and in his form that he goes out and, and executes. So it was um, another really solid hit out for him. Does that make picking him in round one a, a live option now from what you've seen so far, Bede? Yeah, I've been really pleased these last couple of weeks. We'll have another hit out next week and we'll look building into round one. But from a conditioning and preparation point of view, we'll have those discussions with Burjo and his team and obviously Nixon and the match committee to say where that sits. But I know he's really confident in his body and his body of work that he's put in leading in. So it's, it's positive signs for him for he's sure. Every box so far. He has so far, yeah, absolutely. No text today. Is it another example that... Fog that Matt mentioned with his seems like he's got a bit of swagger about him. Is he sort of showing that he's ready to, to be that that focal point? If, if oh, I think it's a good sign for us, isn't it? For sure that, that Tex is now out there, and we've seen Fog grow his game in the last 12 months in particular. And I thought Elliot Himmelberg showed some really good signs you know, in the ruck and ahead of the ball for us today, which is which is pleasing for our fans. So um, look, we've. We've thought about the future in that regard. Obviously, when Tex is no longer with us, we love having Tex around, don't get me wrong, but um, obviously when the opportunity presents to play Phil Thorpe, Himmelberg, Fogarty, um, with the other guys around their feet, it's um, it's pretty exciting for us and, and our fans, I think, so good signs. How, how do you squeeze them all in at the moment, given the way Elliot's playing and obviously you've got Tex to come back, yeah. Rob? Oh, they don't, they don't all fit. That's the reality of you know um, playing four quarters. Over seven quarters, they all fit pretty easily, so... <laughs> Today was a bit easier in that regard, but yeah, they don't all fit. So that's where today is really important to get a look at guys in their position, playing the roles, and we have to make some pretty hard calls next week in regards to what it looks like. But um, it's a good sign for us to be able to have those conversations heading into round one. We've got a you know, fit list, um, guys in some, in some pretty good form, ready to, uh, to make positions their own. So uh, heading into round one is going to be important for us. Can you make that easier or harder? Bit of both, yeah. So definitely, some guys uh, put their hand up and said, "Yep, this is this is me in my spot." And uh, uh, sometimes it was two of them, so it's a matter of yeah, working that out over the coming weeks. But that's what these preseason games are for: trialing our system and testing our system, but also finding out about some individuals. So um, today was a good step for for that. Dawson is official first game as yep. captain. How did how did, what was the lead up like, and how did you see him? Yeah, Dawson. Yeah, he was as per usual business as usual. Um, the, I guess the, the best thing about today is we're up in a vantage point where you could hear conversation and communication out on the ground and you could hear all our leaders, Dawes included, instructing and uh, um, imparting our system out in the game. So that was that was really pleasing and he had an impact with the way that he played too, which is um, one of the reasons why the boys love him as a leader. Um, so hopefully it's uh, you know, one of many games to come with him as an influential leader for us. What do you want from the week? Keep building this cohesion. Um, you know, it's a great chance for us to be away as a group, as well as obviously playing some, some solid footy heading into round one and preparing for round one, which is our ultimate goal. Um, it gives us a good chance to, to get away and build some cohesion off the field, um, do some further development of our game plan, but um, yeah, build that chemistry and cohesion and form heading into round one. From a birth perspective, you're the first club to plan for Nat Fife because knowing he's going to play permanent forward. Yep. How, how did you decide what type of player to play on him and how to, how to prepare for him like that? Yeah, look, we, um, we did a bit of work with that during the week and um, in, the, in the first half we played with some uh, without Nick Murray, so it was with a couple of taller, hybrid sort of defender roles with the likes of Dawson, Hinge, uh, Worrell, who's sort of those thirdish tools if you like. Um, but, you know, Nat's strengths are his ability to uh, to launch the footy and he's elite at ground level as well. So he's going to be a, a tricky matchup, whether it be a key defender or one of those hybrid tools. Um, yeah, team's going to have their work cut out on him. 
like just on what yeah. just lastly is it is yeah. it the same hamstring that's been troubling him all pre-season? Oh, I don't I, I believe so like I don't quote me on that but I believe it's um, yeah it's a recur- recurrence of his hamstring so we'll get that assessed you know, this week and hopefully it's uh, you know, not too far, not too long out for, for Josh. How big a blow is that for him? He's, he's had a pretty tough. Uh, oh, he was out. He was our best trainer. I, I would say before Christmas, and unfortunately had a you know, hamstring issue, which is um, obviously presented itself again today. So he's had a good block of work. Hopefully, this doesn't set him out for too long.